In the history of the Catholic Church, we are exposed to saints with gifts of miracles, prophecy, healings, and other spiritual gifts. Have you ever wished you had these gifts? They are available to you. During our modern times, the Holy Spirit continues to pour out gifts of grace upon us. Pope John Paul II told us that every Sunday is a mini Pentecost. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1082, says, Through His Word, He pours into us the Holy Spirit that contains all gifts. In today's episode, we will share with our listeners the importance of open ears and eyes and hearts as you receive and activate the gifts the Lord has given, the gifts the Lord has made available to all. Welcome to Truth of the Spirit and Impartation of Spiritual Gifts. I'm your host, Patty Bruner of Patriarch Ministries. Today, we will discuss the concept of impartation and activation of spiritual gifts. And we will share prayers of impartation given by personal revelation. A focus of Truth of the Spirit is to share with you the gifts of the Spirit and the fullness of faith. Can you open your ears, eyes, and hearts to receive the fullness of the gifts poured out by the Holy Spirit? Impartation is a personal invitation to receive spiritual gifts that someone wants to share. Activation is to then use the imparted gifts. We should be generous with spiritual gifts. They are not depleted by sharing or using. The person sharing a spiritual gift does not have less. Father Patrick Gonyo of Encounter Ministries said, Use what you have and he gives you more. Are you reluctant to receive because of the responsibility to use the gifts? Over 20 years ago, the Lord told me, My child, the comfort zone you seek does not exist for those who are called to speak the good news to the people. You must constantly be ready to stretch and grow, to give a piece of yourself to others. Sincerity, truth, and the Word of God opens hearts to my grace. One of my favorite times of impartation of spiritual gifts is the praying for teens preparing for confirmation during retreats. The Lord reveals specific spiritual gifts to individuals that can be activated in their lives. This week, I also had the opportunity to individually impart all the spiritual gifts that the Lord has given me with 200 people. We can find many examples in scriptures of the impartation of spiritual gifts. In the Old Testament, a mantle was used to impart a double portion of spiritual gifts from Elijah to Elisha. When Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove on Jesus, and he began public ministry activating the manifestation gifts of the Holy Spirit. Impartation took place at Pentecost, when tongues as a fire settled upon the apostles, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately they activated the gift of tongues by opening their mouths and praising God, and their language became that of the choice of the Holy Spirit. They then boldly stepped out into the public, and other gifts began to be activated. These gifts are listed by St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and are witnessed in the Acts of the Apostles. In Acts chapter 4, 
verse 31, after the apostles were told to cease and desist, as they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The apostles activated the gifts of healing by stretching forth their hands, and signs and wonders were done through the name of Jesus. When the first deacons were ordained, the apostles prayed and laid hands on them. When the apostles heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, John and Peter went down and prayed for them that those baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 17, they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. While Peter was sharing the gospel with the Gentile household of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 44, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. They began speaking in tongues and glorifying God. The Acts of the Apostles and the letters of Paul also give witness to the manifestation of various spiritual gifts. Several of the gifts of the Holy Spirit involve revelation and hearing the voice of God. Jesus told us in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. A stranger. They will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. An important step in hearing the voice of our good shepherd is by spending time with his voice in scripture so that you can recognize him when he speaks to you. Patrick Rice of Encounter Ministry spoke about impartation and activation of the gift of prophecy by listening to God and renewing our mind with scripture. He said, the sheep hear his voice. Be a sheep. Patrick said, I can hear God's voice because who I am, not my holiness. This shows the power of his voice. Who am I? I am a son of God. Jesus promised in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 7, Ask, and you shall receive. To activate the revelation gifts like prophecy, both Father Patrick Gonyo and Patrick Rice recommend asking God questions. Patrick Rice instructed to get more specific answers from God, ask more specific questions. He said, writing God's word down gives him honor. You can test the answer you hear by if the word is in alignment with the nature of God. If angry, guilty, shame, renounce that word. When the Lord corrects you, you still feel good. Use the fruit of the Spirit as a guide for testing. Father Patrick recommends the activation of the gift of healing by asking the Lord, how do you want me to pray for this person's needs? Another suggestion they gave was how to hear God's voice in your head and heart. They said, close your eyes and say your first, middle, and last name. Repeat it. Repeat it again in your mind. This is the same sound of God. In the sacrament of baptism, we are filled with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. As children of God, we receive the gifts of priest, prophet, and king. If this is a new concept for you, we invite you to listen to our podcast, Basics of Faith, Part 6, 
priest, prophet, and king. It's available at patriarchministries.com slash 58 and also on our YouTube channel. In preparation to speak about prophecy to our CIA candidates who were preparing to be baptized, the Lord told me, so too the prophets of this generation prepare the people, including themselves, to more fully accept the miraculous gift of Christ in the Holy Spirit. The Lord told me, my child, fear not this task. The sharing of gifts is not difficult. The decision to share sometimes is difficult. The Lord called me to step out in faith as he gave me this prayer of impartation to prepare them for the gifts to be released at their baptism, to be released at their confirmation. We invite you to now receive this activation of your baptismal gifts of priest, prophet, and king. By the grace of Almighty Lord, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit bestowed on all who call on his name and profess Jesus as Lord, I release the gifts of priest, prophet, and king. Take up these gifts and go out into the world to share the good news. I share my gift of priesthood with you, imparting the gift of relationship with the Lord. I share my gift of prophecy with you, imparting to us a skill of listening and understanding and a joy of sharing God's words with others. I share my gift of kingship with you. As you are adopted by the Lord, you join the royal priesthood of Jesus Christ. I impart to you the love, the duty, and the power of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, I release to you the grace the Lord has given to us to know, love, and serve Him. Amen. Next, we offer you a prayer for the release of the gift of prophecy. The Lord says, open your eyes. Open the eyes of others. Listen. The gift of prophecy is about listening and responding. The ministry of this gift is listening and sharing. Everything that comes forth is not earth-shattering, but it does shatter the hardness of heart and the barriers that cause blindness to truth. Prophecy melts the heart like the fire of a candle melts the wax and the flame burns brighter. Prayer is one-way communication. It is good. By faith, you reach out to God. By prophecy, you allow God to respond and reach out to you. Join me now for the prayer for the release of the gift of prophecy. Father, I have received Jesus as the Lord of my life. I now ask in the name of Jesus that you fill me with a strong outpouring of your Holy Spirit. You tell me in your word that if I ask, I will receive. So, Father, right now I'm asking in Jesus' name, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Open me with your grace that I might receive your power, your word, and your revelation. Amen. Holy Scripture instructs me in 1 Corinthians to pursue love, but strive eagerly for spiritual gifts above all that you may prophesy. I acknowledge that the gift of prophecy is an action of God whereby a person speaks God's message. I ask your forgiveness, Lord, for any time I have denied your action, disregarded your message, or not been willing to receive your words. Help me to be open to your promptings. Please, Lord, remove any obstacles to the release of this gift. 
I ask your forgiveness, Lord, for being afraid to use the gift, afraid of being rejected, ridiculed, or simply afraid. Afraid of being wrong. For any way that these responses have blocked the flow of this gift in my own ministry, I am truly sorry. I receive your forgiveness, Lord, and I forgive myself. I ask now to be totally open to the use of this gift. Touch me, Jesus, and release in me the gift of prophecy and also a gift of your wisdom to know how to act upon the words that you give. Please provide opportunities for me to exercise this gift. Lord, I believe that your Holy Spirit is working in me more than I realize. Please help me to be more sensitive to what you are already doing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the many ways beyond my understanding in which this gift will be manifested through me. I pray for an outpouring and an anointing of your Spirit upon me. Amen. In Jesus' name, I impart to you the gifts of prophecy and wisdom that the Lord has given me to be activated in you. I share these gifts with you gladly. This next prayer is for those who yearn to follow the Lord's command with love and thanksgiving. It is not for those who thirst only for power. It is the impartation of the ministry of healing the Lord has given to all who open their hearts to receive it. When I heard Father Matthias Thalen of Encounter Ministries speak on healing, he said, Healing happens when we pray for healing as we proclaim the gospel. He then reminded us that 0% of the people you don't pray for are healed. Now, we now invite you to receive the impartation for the gift of healing. Join me as we pray this prayer for the release and impartation of the gift of healing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to bring salvation to us. Healing is a sign of that salvation. Infirmity and death are overcome by the power of the name of Jesus. We believe that through the sacrament of baptism, We each have received salvation through the merits of Christ Jesus. We believe that the Holy Spirit now resides within our hearts. We ask for a release of all the gifts of the Holy Spirit prepared for us as we entered into the kingdom of God through baptism. We open our hearts and ask for the manifestation of the gift of healing We promise to use this gift for the glory of God and to build up the church. Manifest your love in our hearts as we use your healing power to help our fellow man. We accept your gifts. We seal them with humility. Help us to use your gift of healing with wisdom and love. Amen. By the grace of Almighty Lord, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit bestowed on all who call on his name and profess Jesus as Lord, I impart the ministry of healing you have given me to all who open their hearts to receive it. In Jesus' name, take up these gifts and go out into the world to share the good news. Dearest Lord, I impart the ministry of healing you have given me to all who open their hearts to receive it. Pray this response with me. Dearest Lord, I open my heart and ask for the manifestation of the gift of healing. I promise to use this gift for the glory of God and to build up the church. Manifest your love in my heart as I use your healing power to help my fellow man. Most Holy Spirit, I accept your gifts. 
I seal them with humility. Help me to use your gifts of healing with wisdom and love. Amen. As you understand that the power is the Lord's and not yours, you should not think it is up to you if a person is healed or not. Sometimes non-visible inner healing is begun. Sometimes delay is necessary for salvation. Sometimes healing is rejected. Sometimes forgiveness is needed to break the barrier. You can always ask. Do not let the apparent lack of healing be a barrier to asking. The signs will accompany the believer. Do not pray in doubt, but in trust and fear of the Lord. Respect the power of the Most High God. We now invite you to take a moment and lay before the Lord all He has given you. Do not reject them, but surrender them to be imparted to your heart according to God's will. Abraham, surrendering Isaac is the same thing. As you surrender to God that which he gave to you, realize that you can walk away with nothing. Nothing but the joy of obedience to God's will. Think about the spiritual gifts of manifestation. The Lord invites you to enter the realm of his glory that he prepared for you the day of creation. It is like nothing you can comprehend. Some of the Lord's prophets have been given a glimpse or a taste of it so as to help you to prepare to receive it. It is the bridal chamber. The gifts of the Holy Spirit were espousal presence, engagement presence. The Holy Spirit entices you to the Lord, our bridegroom, with these gifts. In the name of Jesus, I impart to you all the spiritual gifts the Lord has given to me. I share these with you gladly. May you be aware of the Lord's prompting to activate these gifts for the good of the church and say yes to God's divine will for the kingdom of God. Right about now, you may be wondering how we can have the authority to dispense these gifts. Well, here's the thing. The Lord dispensed all these gifts at your baptism. All these gifts came with the Holy Spirit as the living water flowed over you and you received the redeeming grace of salvation and you welcomed him into your heart. But they may have been like presents that have sat on a shelf since they were given. You may have never read the tag that has your name on it. The Lord says, receive, receive. Activate his gifts. Open his gifts to you and use them. Activate his gifts. All of the gifts of manifestation, the charismatic gifts, are meant to be shared with one another. Impart them to your children. Impart them to your spouse. Activate them and use them to allow everyone to know God's love. In preparation for this impartation to you, the Lord has spent over 20 years preparing me. The Lord told me this, Patricia, you dear child of God, the Father expects you to bless those who seek his face. Call upon my name to bless the children who seek healing. Count all who come forward by their number before the Lord, each of my children are number one to me. Each are important. Count each one as the one that I have sent you to minister to. Do not hesitate. Do not wonder if this one or that one is the one who needs your touch. Touch them each, child. 
touch them with the reflection of my love. Touch them with the channeled grace that it might flow through you, the willing vessel, into the brokenhearted, the one that has a barrier to the fullness of my love. Will they all be healed? No. Will they all be loved? Most definitely. Will they all receive peace? All who open their hearts to me will receive my peace. My peace I give them. Stand courageously before them, dear daughter. Stand and hold them up to me. I will take you both into my arms. The Lord said to me, Each one of my children are loved by me. And each, with their individual ways, are loved in a different and individual way by me. The Lord said, I delight in the talents of my children and I long for the return to innocence. Sometimes my children take my gifts without gratitude. This causes the gift to dry up. Sometimes my children refuse to cross the room to receive their presence. They catch a glance, but the effort tires them before a journey is even started. It is fear or selfishness that causes that weariness with a side dish of pride and arrogance. My children, the Lord says, lift up your hearts to me. Allow me to refresh you for the journey. Accept my grace. Receive my body and be nourished. Be fed by the everlasting life-giving food now in the world. Listen now to the impartation of St. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians chapter 4. Paul writes, So I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds, darkened in understanding, alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance, because of their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have handed themselves over to licentiousness, for the practice of every kind of impurity to an excess. That is not how you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way, in righteousness and holiness of truth. The Lord taught me, although the Holy Spirit is within every baptized person, our free will choices can lessen the effect of the Holy Spirit in our lives. When we are confirmed by the bishop, we ask for the Holy Spirit to activate our faith that we might share it with others. The Spirit always provides the grace we need and invites us to surrender to that grace. Right now, the Spirit has drawn you deeper into grace. We are to come before the presence of our Lord and Savior in the Eucharistic presence, not just to adore Him, He is worthy of our adoration, but to come before Him with an open heart to receive the presence of the Holy Spirit. The fire of God's love, the fire of the Holy Spirit will burn away all barriers of fear and doubt. The fire of the Holy Spirit will melt our hearts to be one with the sacred heart of Jesus. As you allow the fire of the Holy Spirit to dwell within your heart and mind, you will fall deeper in love with Jesus, the Word of God. As the fire of the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart, the gifts of grace will manifest and you will fulfill your commission to heal the sick, raise the dead, and handle deadly things placed in your path by the destroyer known as Satan. The ascension of our Lord released our inheritance of the promise of God. It is now waiting for us to take what is given to us and to repent the times we have rejected it, to follow our own way rather than the way of the Lord. 
the Holy Scriptures through the Holy Church reveal how the Spirit is among us, joining us in unity. As we conclude this episode, here's one more thing the Lord has shared with me. My child, when you step out in faith, you will find those who thirst for the message of God and those who reject. This has been the same for many generations. The graces unleashed that can overflow and reach even hardened hearts come from stepping out. Do not wait for the flow to carry you away, but search for the spring. Drink of it. Share it with the others. What is taken then replenishes tenfold, then a hundredfold, then a thousandfold. The Lord says, those standing near Niagara Falls, get wet. Come, stand beside me. You've been listening to Truth of the Spirit and Impartation of Spiritual Gifts. I'm your host, Patty Bruner of Patriarch Ministries. You can review the script of this episode at patriarchministries.com slash 222. We invite you to the website or to our free YouTube channel to learn more about the gifts and charisms that are mentioned in this episode and then come back for more. There's always more, more to say, more to do, more to receive, more to share. With the Holy Spirit, there's always more. Amen. This is the Padua Podcast Network. Network Network.com